This is the tilt -a ring grip for the DJI Ronin Gimbal. It's designed to give you a more ergonomic posture while holding your gimbal, preventing back pain. I find it really useful when shooting. I almost never use my gimbal without it. But what if you want the same nice wide grip, but without using a gimbal? Well, you can rig out your camera with a cage, a side handle, and a top handle to get a similar feel, but other than being pretty expensive, I find it just doesn't feel as nice as the tilt -a ring grip, especially when using a heavy camera like my C70. There are some options for ring grips on Line, mainly from newer, but these universal cages seem pretty cheaply made and they don't have a quick release system and they're too small for most cinema cameras. So now what? Well, if the thing you need doesn't exist, you make it. I spent the last two weeks 3 modeling, printing and assembling my own super sturdy, customizable and professional looking ring grip that will fit almost any camera and be super versatile for using in a professional setting. This universal cage has a quick release Manfrotto plate, ergonomic side handles, 3 cold shoe attachments, a top handle and even a Manfrotto plate under Underneath, so you can duck it on your tripod. It's made from 3D printed parts, cheap 1 inch aluminum tubes which are super sturdy and M6 and quarter inch screws. The best part is you can change the width and height of the ring grip just by cutting the aluminum tubes longer or shorter. So if you have a 3D printer, this is a really cheap and easy way to hold your camera in a more ergonomic way, saving your back in the long run. Let's see exactly how to build it. You'll need a couple basic tools for this build, but chances are you already have most of them. A drill to make the holes and an electric screwdriver or impact driver to drive the screws are a must. And to cut the aluminum tubes, you can just use a pipe cutter like this one. It's the cheapest option and it doesn't make a mess when cutting the tubes. The hardware is also pretty simple. You'll only need M6 and quarter 20 screws. As for the base plate, it's a P200 quick release plate, which is the cheapest available and a lot of brands sell the exact same. That base plate comes with the Manfrotto plate that we'll use under the ring grip to dock it on a tripod. This lets you use your favorite base plate on your camera. In my case, it's the DJI RS2 quick release plate because it attaches to any camera cage that has an Arca Swiss rail at the bottom. Optionally, you can add a to three cold shoe mounts on the ring grip, but I also modeled versions of the parts with cold shoes in them. This can make your build cheaper because you won't have to buy the adapters, but the accessories might not fit as perfectly in the 3D printed cold shoes. If you decide to make this project, here's how I recommend to print all the parts. Because of its durability and resistance to high temperatures, I use PETG filament for all of the parts. If you use PLA, the parts might crack more easily. I printed everything at a 0.3 millimeter layer height with three walls and a 50% gyrated in Fill. This will make the parts super sturdy. As for the print orientation, try to have the holes for the tubes placed vertically on the build plate. This won't be possible for all parts, so here's how I oriented it and supported each part. The side handles can lay upside down without supports. The top handle bracket can lay on its side and the end cap should be upside down. The 90 degree connectors can lay on the angled reinforcement. Same goes for the feet, but you should at least have support for the longer foot. Finally, the base plate can lay on its side, but make sure you add support under the overhanging area. With that, every part should print nicely, no matter the printer you own. With all of the parts printed, it's time to start building. For the 3D printed parts, you should have your base plate, your two side handles, the two feet, the two 90 degree connectors, the top handle bracket, and the end cap. As far as hardware goes, you should have two 12 inch aluminum tubes, two 9 inch tubes, and one 5 inch tube. Of course, you can change those lengths to make your ring grip bigger or smaller. Then there's the P200 base plate, a Manfrotto plate with a 3 8 and quarter inch screw, four 1 inch long quarter 20 screws, and 14 40 millimeter long M6 screws. To cut your aluminum tubes to length, insert it in the cutting tool and tighten the knob. Then turn the tube one full rotation and tighten the knob again. Repeat that until the tube snaps. I like to use the deburring tool that came with the tube cutter to clean up the cut edges, leaving me with nice clean parts. Let's start assembling the ring grip, starting with a 12 inch tube and the base plate. Insert the tube in the base plate until it's perfectly centered. Then take out your drill and make two holes in the tube where indicated on the 3D printed parts. Finally, simply drive in the screws. Be careful not to crack the 3D printed parts if you're using an impact driver. Now to attach the P200 base plate, put it on the 3D printed base plate and flip it. Insert the first screws in the holes and tighten them by hand. To attach the Manfrotto plate under the base plate, just screw on the quarter inch and 3 screws. 
and now the base plate assembly is finished. Moving on to the feet, slide one of them on one end with the long foot towards the back and make sure the Manfrotto plate is perfectly parallel to the feet. Mark the placement of the hole using a sharpie and drill it. After driving in the screw, add the other feet on and repeat the same steps. Take out your two 9 inch tubes and insert them in the holes on the feet. After drilling the holes and driving in the screws, you should be left with a really sturdy assembly. It's time for the side handles. As you can see, the hole for these is at an angle which makes it tricky to drill into. Be really careful to make the holes at the right angle so that the screw goes in properly. With that done, the handles are surprisingly ergonomic and comfortable. Now let's assemble the top part of the ring grip. Take out your last 12 inch tube and the bracket for the top handle and mark the center of the tube. Then drill the hole on the mark and drive in the screw. Take out the 5 inch tube and the end cap and push them together. Then insert the tube onto the bracket and screw it in place. It's time to add on the 90 degree connectors and insert them with the long side in the tube. Next, make sure the top handle is parallel to your work surface and mark the holes on the two 90 degree connectors. After installing them properly, here's the result. Now for the hardest part of the build, putting the upper and lower assemblies together. Chances are they won't slip on super easily, so take your time not to break the parts. I used a hammer to push the parts in place, but I should have probably protected the parts I was hitting with a piece of wood. After drilling the holes and driving in the screws, your ring grip is finished. This thing looks pretty professional and it's super sturdy. You can see that some of the parts have quarter inch holes, which are here to screw on regular cold shoe adapters. The cold shoe on the top handle lets you attach a monitor, just like on the Telta ring grip. To put your camera on the ring grip, make sure you have a Manfrotto base plate. Simply slide the camera where you want it to be and tighten the knob on the base plate. Most mirrorless cameras are small enough to let you attach a microphone on the top. And with all the accessories on the rig, it looks really nice. A super cool feature is that you can dock the whole thing on your tripod, letting you make super smooth panning and tilting movements. And the top handle on the rig is nice for low angle shots and to carry the rig around. The ring grip wasn't designed for that, but I wanted to see if a big camera like my C70 would fit. Surprisingly, it fit perfectly and was really well balanced. The ring grip made the camera feel lighter to hold and the monitor placement is just perfect. Unfortunately, the camera is too big to allow a microphone to fit, so I designed new 90 degree connectors that would let me attach more cold shoe adapters. And now the ring grip has three cold shoe attachments, which is great to add a microphone and an additional accessory like a small light. And with all of that on, the rig looks so legit. It's surprisingly comfortable to hold mostly thanks to my ergonomic handles. And I can genuinely see myself using this rig for professional work. If you don't want to spend more money on cold shoe adapters, I made versions of the 90 degree connectors and the top handle bracket that have integrated cold shoes in the design. So to recap, you can get everything you need on Amazon except for the aluminum tubes which you can get from Home Depot or most other hardware stores. You can download by STLs and 3D printer parts with less than one roll of PTG filament. Then you can follow this video to assemble your own ring grip in just a couple of hours and end up with something that's truly useful and versatile. All of that for $60 to $80 Canadian. If you want to build your own DIY 3D printed ring grip, I made the files available over in my Etsy store, which is linked in the video description. With this project finished, let me know in the comments what camera rig you'd like to see me build in a future video. And I'll see you then. Bye.